About every 20 years, a new generation enters the workforce, and often people freak out. Today, it's the millennial generation, born from 1982 to 2004. Back in the 1990s, it was Generation X, with their disrespect for authority figures and cynicism. Before that, it was the baby boomers, with their long hair, protests, and self-focus. Each new generation brings a shift in values, so every 20 years or so, we have to adjust to the newest generation that takes over the workplace. Millennials are revolutionizing the way we view business. The social internet is powerful, but it was never going to revolutionize management on its own. And that's where the millennials step in. Over the next several years, millennials will ascend into management positions. And with that will come change. This book is a guide for leaders who want to participate in the revolution rather than be run over by it. After some research, we discovered four organizational capacities that we think will prepare organizations to be successful. Digital. Digital is about perpetual and exponential improvement of all facets of organizational life using both the tools and the mindsets of the digital world. Millennials are the first generation to have only worked in a digital workplace, and they are used to being able to leverage that power. Digital organizations grow faster and accomplish more by focusing on the user both internally and externally. Clear. Clear is about an increased, more transparent, and more intelligent flow of information and knowledge that supports innovation and problem solving within organizations. Clear organizations make smarter decisions that produce better results. Fluid. Fluid is about increasing and distributing power in a dynamic and flexible way. Fluid in the millennial era is about systems that enable an integrated process of thinking, acting, and learning at all levels of the organization. Fluid organizations serve customers more effectively and are more agile in strategy and execution. Fast. Fast is about taking action at the exact moment that action is needed. Fast organizations jump ahead of the competition by releasing control in a way that does not increase risk. We're optimistic about this revolution and about the future of business. And optimism, not coincidentally, happens to be a key trait of millennials. Generations. To get a better understanding of the future of business, we're going to take a look at the past. The hype and the oversimplifications that dominate the conversation about generations have prevented us from seeing the serious implications that generational differences have for businesses. Historians William Strauss and Neil Howe are arguably the most credible authors when it comes to generations. They have discovered a pattern about the generation cycle. According to them, once every four generations, about 80 to 100 years, there has been a major war that marked the end of one era and the beginning of a new one. The first major transition was during the Revolutionary War in the 1770s, and then four generations later, the American Civil War, and then the Great Depression and World War II. If you skip ahead 80 years from the Depression and World War II, it is right now. If the pattern is correct, we're due for a significant transition from one era to the next. In the last decade, there's been a lot of evidence that suggests our machine approach to management may not be around for much longer. Not coincidentally, machines are not very good at engagement or agility. The internet will certainly play a role in the shift, especially with how we run our organizations. Millennials are not the first generation to be frustrated with bureaucracy and hierarchy, but they are the first generation to have been given the tools to get around them. Growing up in the context of great abundance, millennials have a hard time in a workplace where they are expected to follow orders, wait for others to make decisions, and do things the way they've always been done. Millennials want to do something different. Digital. Digital is the first of the four capacities because in many ways it is the most obvious characteristic of the millennial generation. You don't have to be an online retailer to embrace what it means to be digital. It's more about the digital mindset. It's about organizing and working in ways that leverage and build off what digital technology has made possible in today's world. A big part of that is personal service. The digital mindset enables a personalized focus on each customer, something that was impossible in previous eras. Organizations that embrace this mindset will put the customer first when it comes to decision making and provide as much customized attention as possible. Digital companies are also constantly improving. 
Innovation is on the forefront of everyone's mind. Companies that embrace the digital mindset can innovate business product offerings, business models, and even internal management processes with a sharp focus on continuous improvement. Being digital doesn't mean you need the latest technology. That can be part of it, but it mostly means putting the user first, serving the bulk of your customers, and continuously innovating and improving. Truly digital companies integrate these principles into the framework of their organization. They invest more in technology. They focus on internal culture. They enhance their digital collaboration. To make your organization digital, try to enable these principles. Create space for experiments. Let your employees try new things without fearing punishment. Guide your employees and give them better feedback. Hire for culture fit and personal growth. Revamp your HR department. Have them focus on using a hiring system that gets better candidates in reliable data around technical and collaborative skills. Some of these may seem obvious, but that doesn't make them easy. The digital mindset is about a relentless focus on the user, both external with customers and internal with employees, the ability to personalize the experiences and continuous innovation, unlocking new value through learning and improvement. Clear. There's an assumption in management that releasing too much information will lead to chaos, mistakes, misinterpretations, inefficiency, and an overall lack of coordinated effort. This can be true. The solution is to control the information. But sharing information doesn't have to result in chaos. For example, let's look at open source software. By sharing the code and letting people change it, the software actually became more stable. Making it open allows the right information to make its way into the right hands. This is the core of CLEAR. Making more information available to more parts of the system to enable better and more strategic decision making, thus improving results. CLEAR organizations start with the assumption that information is and should be available. From there, they sharpen the focus to ensure that the correct information ends up in the correct place, relying on the power of an intelligent, decentralized system rather than central control. Millennials are used to having all the information they could ever want at the tips of their fingertips. They have always had Google. In the workplace, they are frustrated by the lack of information flow. We've all felt it. It's frustrating feeling like we have little power and are missing out on opportunities. While there is no one perfect way to make your organization clear, clear companies have a few things in common. First, they work out loud. The internal work that gets done is never private. It is transparent and visible. When everything is visible, employees will make better decisions about how to get the work done without requiring any actual layers of management. They bring clients into the system. The clients are in on the transparency as well. They help make decisions and assist with project management. By creating a system where everything is more visible to everyone, it becomes easier to come to decisions in a collaborative way in which everyone's relative expertise is accounted for and in sharing the decision-making load. To make your organization clear, you must define your company culture. Here's our definition of culture. The collection of words, actions, thoughts, and stuff that clarifies and reinforces what a company truly values. Most importantly, Culture is the way people work together. Share your data and be clear about who makes what decisions. Lack of clarity on these issues is often a huge inhibitor to good decisions. Give everyone access. Millennials know that to do a good job, they should be able to find the information they need inside their organizations. Fluid. Fluidity takes a look at the structure of a management system. Hierarchies have their purpose. Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!